Thank you for joining us here at Westerlea United Methodist Church. Please join me for the call to worship. Gladly, we gather in spirit and community to worship God. God is our rock, the strength of our living. God's love is sure. God provides hope when all seems hopeless. God feeds our souls, nourishes our minds, refreshes our bodies, giving us the strength for the journey ahead. God sends us Jesus the Christ to show us the way and empower us through God's Holy Spirit for witness and service. God is our daily bread. Amen. Let us pray. Dear God, help us to feel you are here with us today. Even when we whine and complain about our lives, your love is never failing. You still provide for us. Thank you for loving us even when our trust in you becomes weak. Bless us as we worship you this day. Amen. Every promise we can make, every prayer and step, Hear now the scripture reading from Exodus, chapter 16, verses 1 to 21. The whole congregation of the Israelites set out from Elam, and Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai on the 15th day of the second month after they had departed from the land of Egypt. The whole congregation of the Israelites were complaining against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill the whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. 
In that way, I will test them, whether they will follow my instructions or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on the other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard your, the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked forward toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. And then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening the quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of the dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine, flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Gather as much of it as each of you needs, an omer to a person according to the number of persons all provided for those in their own tents. The Israelites did so, some gathering more, some less. But when they measured it with an omer, those who had gathered much had nothing over, and those who had gathered little had no shortage. They gathered as much as each of them needed. And Moses said to them, Let no one leave any of it over until morning. But they did not listen to Moses. Some part left it until morning, and it bred worms and became foul. And Moses was angry with them. Morning by morning they gathered it, as much as they needed, but when the camp grew hot, it melted. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, this is indeed a very long scripture passage from Exodus chapter 16. In fact, this is not the entire chapter that Bob read for us. I'm going to share the rest of it in a moment. We're dealing with this passage, however, because this whole month for us at West Los Angeles United Methodist Church, we are running our Vacation Bible School curriculum through the five Sundays of July. The fun theme title is Food Truck Party on a Roll with God. And cleverly, this Cokesbury curriculum, each session lifts up a different passage that includes food to bring home each sub-theme message. It's really going to be a fun month for the kids. And we are so thankful for all the adults and youth that are providing their time, talents, and dedication to run this fun programming as they, the kids, grow in faith. But as a benefit to all of us, we too will be exploring some of these themes with the adults as well. So hang on, everyone. This is going to be a fun month. Friends, this passage deals with the Israelites complaining in the desert. Think about it. After all that, after all that Moses did, and, and I might add, reluctantly at first, to heed God's call to leave his comfortable life and go back to Egypt, to deliver the Israelites from captivity and slavery in Egypt. And now in the wilderness, he is repeatedly up against a whining and complaining people. Even after Moses secured their release and parted the Red or Reed Sea for their safe passage and escape, the truth of the matter was that it only took a few days in the desert for the people to start whining and complaining about how bad things were. In fact, so deep was their anxiety, they even said that it would have been better to have died in Egypt. We might certainly think how ungrateful the Israelites were for all that Moses and God had done for them. And yet perhaps if we were wandering around in the desert, thirsty and hungry, 
maybe we'd be doing the same thing. Maybe. It's human nature, maybe. And that is a major part of these stories, isn't it? That in spite of our whining and complaining about our circumstances of life, we believe in our God, who we believe still loves us and provides for us. They said, the Israelites, if only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the pots of meat and ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. <laughs> yep, when we consider our misery today, the past, even though it was very bad, certainly looks a lot more appealing than it actually was. But God hears their cries and their hunger pangs, and God provides manna from heaven in the mornings, a strange flaky substance that has the subsistence of bread. And God provides quail in the evening for meat, and the people are sustained and fed by the goodness and the grace of God. But here's the thing. Along with the provisions that God provides, the Israelites are also given instructions on what to do and what not to do. Frankly, some of the Israelites are better at following instructions than others. That's probably true for us as well. You give us an inch and we'll gladly try to take a mile. Moses told the people not to save any leftover manna until morning. But what does the scripture tell us? But they did not listen to Moses and some left part of it until morning, and it got infested with maggots and became rotten. <laughs> Definitely not a very pleasant thought indeed. Moses got angry with the people because they did not follow God's instructions. You know, it's tough to be Moses, isn't it? But let us now finish reading Exodus 16. It says, beginning with verse 22, on the sixth day, they gathered twice as much food, two omers apiece. When all of the leaders of the congregation came and told Moses, he said to them, this is what the Lord had commanded. Tomorrow is a day of solemn rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Bake what you want to bake and boil what you want to boil. And all that is left over, put aside to be kept until the morning. So they put it aside until morning, just as Moses commanded them, and it did not rot, and there were no maggots in it. Moses said, eat it today, for today is a Sabbath to the Lord. Today you will not find it in the fee field. Six, six days you shall gather it, but on the seventh day, which is a Sabbath, there will be none. On the seventh day, some of the people went out to gather, and they found none. The Lord said to Moses, How long will you refuse to keep my commandments and instructions? See, the Lord has given you the Sabbath. Therefore, on the sixth day, he gives you food for two days. Each of you, stay where you are. Do not leave your place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. The Israelites called it manna. It was like white coriander seed, and the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. Moses said, this is what the Lord has commanded. Let an omer of it be kept throughout your generations in order that they may see the food with which I fed you in the wilderness when I brought you out of the land of Egypt. And Moses said to Aaron, Take a jar and put an omer of manna in it and place it before the Lord to be kept throughout your generations. Just as the Lord commanded Moses, so Aaron placed it before the covenant for safekeeping. The Israelites ate manna 40 years until they came to a habitable land. They ate manna until they came to the border of the land of Canaan. An omor is a tenth of an ephah. You see, Moses gives them more instructions. On the sixth day, you can collect twice as much food, 
but do not collect anything on the Sabbath because that is a day of rest. But some of the Israelites went out to gather food on the Sabbath anyway. God gets perturbed and takes it out on Moses, saying to Moses, how long will you refuse to keep my commandments and instructions? So, beso so besides the message that our children are learning in VBS today, which is God provides, the second message for us adults here is God is a very patient God. That should be good news for all, all and any of us. For God must love us an awful lot to put up with our disobedience, greed, selfishness, and constant complaining. But here's the last thing to say about this passage. Moses tells the people to put an omer of manna in a jar. An omer is a Jewish standard of measurement that they are meant to keep for generations as a remembrance of and a memorial to the fact that God had sustained them through the wilderness. Moses tells them to do this lest they forget. Today, friends, we are also in our um, in-person service. We are partaking of the Lord's Supper or Holy Communion. It, too, involves bread representing the body of Christ and the wine or the juice that represents the blood of Christ. We do this as well for the very same reason why the Israelites were commanded to keep some manna in a jar as a remembrance of the grace of God who provides. Holy Communion is God's provision of grace through the life, death, and resurrection of God of Jesus Christ, who in spite of our brokenness, faults, and sin, God yet provides daily sustenance for our very souls. We share in the holy meal so that we might never forget God's unending grace and love in Jesus the Christ. God provides. God is patient. And because of it, we have the opportunity to grow in God's grace and in faith and in service and in love. Amen. wine now the simple may divine for any to receive by your mercy we come to your table by your grace you are making us faithful Lord we remember you and remembrance us to worship, and as we worship you, our worship leads to communion, we respond to your invitation, we remember you. His body, His blood, know that He has overcome every trial we will face. None too lost to be saved, none too broken nor ashamed, all are welcome in this place. By Your mercy we come to Your table, by your grace, you are making us faithful. Lord, we remember you. And remembrance leads us to worship. And as we worship you, our 
worship leads to communion. We respond to your invitation. We remember you. Done you destroyed our death. Rising you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Let us pray. God of love and compassion, you are the one who provides when we hunger and thirst, when we whine and complain, when we lament and cry out. You are the one who provides even when all seems well, and we neglect to give you thanks. Thanks to you, the one who provides always provides. You are the one who provides for and loves all of your children, even as humanity leans toward self-centered discrimination and hate and turns away from what you would have us do instead, to see all as sacred beings created in your image, to follow in the way of your son Jesus who cared for the least of these, and to rise up empowered by the Holy Spirit to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly toward beloved community. You are the one who provides the way forward when we stray too far off the path, when we harm one another, when we reject who you created us to be. You are the one who entrusts each of us to provide compassion, community, and companionship to one another so that we may bring your hope and your love into this world. And in so doing, become one who, like you, provides. Amen. Let us continue in prayer with the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
God's world to the glorious feast. We work and we pray through sorrow and joy, extending your love to the last and the least. We seek to become a beacon of hope, a lamp for the heart and a light for the feet. We learn year by year to let love shine through until we see Christ in each person we meet. We welcome the scarred, the wealthy, the poor, the busy, the lonely, and all who need care. We offer a home to those who will come, our hands quick to help, our hearts ready to care. Together by grace we witness and Jesus, in whom we grow strong. Together we serve in spirit and truth, remembering love is the strength of our song. Friends, hear now these words of benediction. Go forth from this place, trusting in faith that whatever you encounter in life, God provides. Go out then, attuned to God's grace, so that you can see, you can feel, you can know deep in your heart that God is with you. Go out in witness and service, carrying God's love to every moment of your living and every person you meet. May God and Jesus Christ be your strength and your hope. Amen.